You might remember last Monday we talked about a planning application for a solar farm in uh, Rathoe in County Carlow um, and we were interested to see and to get some information from locals about it. We thought we'd find out more about solar farms in general though and we'd ask an expert because the scale of that uh, farm in particular sparked uh, some concerns and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Dr Paul Dean. He's a clean energy scientist at University College Cork. Good morning Paul, how are you? Good morning, Emer. It's actually a wonderful day to be talking about solar down here because the sun is shining and the wind is blowing down here in West Cork. Fantastic. And uh, for those of us um, that don't know a lot about solar farms, explain to us just the basics of what they are and what they look like. Yeah, a solar farm in many ways, Emer, it's, it's similar to a regular farm where a regular farm uses animals to produce foods for our needs, whereas a solar farm uses solar panels to produce electricity. And of course, we use this electricity to power our appliances, get all those great haircuts that we're all looking forward to. And this is essentially what a solar farm is. Now, they're relatively new to Ireland and there's a couple of interesting things going on internationally in the background. The reason why we haven't seen so many solar farms in Ireland before are, are certainly not that much interest is because the price of producing these panels was always very high um, and but many of us would probably have seen in supermarkets and in garden stores and DIY places you know these these little uh, solar panels that we use to power maybe fairy lights in our gardens or security lights so the price of those panels themselves have dropped significantly in the last number of years and this is why this has sparked a big interest in Ireland in using this technology to generate electricity. Okay, and um, if, say, uh, there was a solar farm being planned for beside your house, what are the things you should look out for, or is there a cause for concern anywhere? Well, it's always good to engage with these things at an early stage, Emer, because if the thing is built and you're not happy afterwards, it's very difficult to get, you know, to look at these things retrospectively. So we would always encourage people to, you know, get onto the planners, get onto developers. If you're curious, if you have questions, ask concerns. Uh, solar farms are, are relatively benign in many regards because they wouldn't have many moving parts. Uh, many of your listeners might be very familiar with wind farms. Of course, wind farms are very, very visible. They, they, they often have a very clear impact on the land and some people really like them and, and they do bother some people so solar farms are a little bit different they, they tend to be lower to the ground but that doesn't mean that they're not going to inconvenience anyone so if you're living near the, the solar farm and you're not really sure what's going on it's really important to engage with the planning authority ask questions uh, if you're not sure about what it will look like the developers should be able to provide you with some kind of photorealistic uh, images of what the planned, wind far- planned solar farm may look like in the future and these will help people understand really about what they're going to be dealing with if the pro- if the project goes ahead. Okay, and what are the questions we should ask, by the way? Just, you might know the, the, the pros and the cons of the solar farm. Yeah, well, it's always interesting just to look at the size of the farm. And, you know, even though I've been working in this area, Emer, for many, yeah, many years now, I often find it quite difficult sometimes to understand the scale of these projects. Uh, I think that the, 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 the solar farm in, that we're talking to in relation to this morning is, is about 120 or 120 or, uh, hectares. Now some developers give the size of the project in hectares or in acres or in uh, megawatts and this is quite confusing to the general public. So it's, it's, it's very important to understand the clear impact of what this will mean. Uh, now 127 hectares would probably produce enough electricity for about 12,000 homes. So that's quite significant. But of course, if you're living right next to this development, there are certain things that might inconvenience you. It's important to understand, well, what's going on at the construction phase? Will there be lots of trucks in and out? Will there be lots of construction equipment? Will cranes be required? Will there be drilling? Uh, you know, will there be removal of, of rock? Um, and then once it is re- built, you know, will there be staffing there? Will there be people coming and going the whole time? Or will, it be rel- or will it be a relatively uh, automatic thing? And the final thing then to uh, keep in mind is, um, you know, will there be noise implications? Um, but I think probably the, the most important thing at the start is, you know, is this coming near to your property? Or, uh, uh, and if it is, how do you think it will impact you? Okay, uh, so those are the things to look out for. Can you see, are, have we made great advances in solar energy in Ireland? Where do we stand kind of when you compare us internationally? 
Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question, Emer. Internationally, if we stand back first of all and look at all all of our energy, uh, Emer, we're, we're actually one of the most fossil fuel dependent countries in Europe. Uh, about eight out of every ten units of energy is fossil fuel. It's either coal or gas or oil, and we're we're massively dependent on oil. So we're not actually in a good place. And even if we look at our environmental scorecard, uh, Emer, we're we're probably worse again. Ireland is one of the few countries in Europe this year who will have to purchase credits from other European countries to buy clean energy. And we have to do that, Emer, because we're not producing enough clean energy in our own country ourselves. So Ireland has had some success in terms of producing electricity from wind farms. And again, many of our listeners will probably be very familiar with the with, with wind farms. But we actually have no solar farms of any scale in Ireland to date. And that goes back again to the cost has only reduced in the last number of years. Um, but going forward, but in the planning process, there is a very large pipeline of projects. So there's a, a lot of developers hoping to build solar farm projects in the next year out of the next 10 years. OK. And is there anything to be said for uh, giving farmers an opportunity to feed back to the grid and, um, you know, to have their own solar panels on rooftops, etc.? Yeah, that's really important. You know, I think a big part of the success story of renewable energy and clean energy in other countries, if you look at Denmark and Scandinavia and Germany, a big part of that success is community buy-in and community empowerment. Uh, If you're living next to a development and you're not seeing any benefits within the local community or you don't feel involved, well, it's going to be a little bit difficult to accept that. And that's not just for solar farms. That goes for factories and and, and quarries and, 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 and right across the whole planning spectrum. So by having some community involvement, by having some community ownership, either within the direct community or from the landowners, that's really important for giving a sense of ownership to the project. And we know that that is one of the key to successes in these projects in other European countries. Okay. Well, uh, Paul, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, And we might check in with you again in the near future when we see whether or not uh, the plans progress. But fascinating just to find out a little bit more about solar energy. How's all in UCC? Is it eerie there or are people uh, people finally um, filtering into the campus? It's been quite actually in the last number of, I think UCC were, were quite agile in many regards that we, we, we switched over to remote working uh, quite quickly. And I think we've been very lucky, actually, in fact, that most of staff and most of my colleagues have still have our health and still have our, uh, our, our jobs, which kind of sets us apart from many people. But we made the transition quite, quite well. And I think it's a, it's a thing that a lot of universities across Ireland have adopted it quite well, thankfully. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, and the very best look to Paul Dean, doctor and clean energy scientist at University College Cork, chatting to us about that application uh, that is due on the 5th of July. So we'll, we'll watch closely and we'll get back in touch with some of the landowners in the area and we'd certainly welcome um, a chat with the applicants, Terra. Um, unfortunately, they haven't come back to us as yet.